Hello to another landscape photo editing tutorial. In previous post-processing tutorials, I've already talked about advanced masks and how to create them. And I also showed you their usage in different editing scenarios, including dodge and burn. Today, I want to follow up on those tutorials with a short introduction to exposure blending and how I use luminosity masks in the process. As in my dodge and burn tutorial, I will again use Lumensia by Greg Benz for the mask creation. If you don't want to use it, just check my video on advanced mask creation and you're also ready to go. So the photo I'll be working on today is this seascape shot of the three sisters taken near Taranaki in New Zealand. Um, actually, there's only one of the three sisters in the photo here. You see here the base exposure I took. It was already past sunset and I used a Lee 0.6 hard and a Lee 0.6 soft edge GND filter to balance the exposure, if I remember correctly. So I had the filters here in the upper half of the frame and I had it a little bit tilted so it follows roughly this line here. Now, there are often discussions about why anyone would still use GND filters where you could just blend in Photoshop, which I'll also be doing in this tutorial. While I can't speak for anyone, I can tell you why I still use GND filters. Just look at this photo. By using GND filters, I already have quite a decent starting point for further post processing. Without the filters, the sky would have been overexposed in many parts. With the filters, the whole frame is balanced. The only problem now is that I also darkened the C stack because of the filters alignment. That's why, in addition to using GND filters, I also took additional brighter exposures can show you those. So I have one here, which I'll be using for the rock face, and another one, which I'll be using for the C-stick. Those I can now easily blend into the photo. And I prefer the workflow of brightening very specific parts of an image to blending in large parts of the sky, for example. It's just how I like to work, which doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. I just get cleaner results when starting with a photo that's already close to the final blend. The smaller the areas that need to be blended, the better. So let's head right into it. Starting with this base exposure here, which as I said already contains most of the details and is quite a good starting point for further post-processing, I want to now bring in a little bit more details. So if we look at this exposure or Let's look at the histogram. We see that basically all the detail is there. So there are not too many cut off dark tones and the bright tones are also there. And I have here an exposure warning layer. So this is the layer I was using in my other tutorials too, which is basically just a gradient map where I set the blend if down here so I basically pull the bright triangle down to like six or eight, something like that, where I want the exposure warning to start. And I pull the black triangle up to a value where I want the exposure warning for the bright tones to start. So with this exposure warning layer active, I can see that basically I don't lose many dark tones, but what I have in those dark tones is usually a lot more noise. So especially with my Canon camera, um, the dark part of the histogram usually contains quite a bit of noise. And when I want to work on such a photo and doing some more post-processing like brightening, contrast and all those stuff, this noise will be enhanced. So it's good to have in addition to this base exposure where I used filters, also some brighter exposures which I can now blend in in those darker areas. And this is what I have here. I have a layer which I call rock face. And I'll blend this in here for the rocks because it also contains a little bit of warm light here, which I like. And then I have a layer called C-Stack, 
which is a very bright layer you see here in the histogram there's a lot of a lot of space on the left side and this contains all the details for the c-stack so i'll blend this in for the c-stack and the rest of the frame especially the sky and the foreground with a reflection i just leave from the base layer so an easy way to do this blend here is to use luminosity masks and to find the luminosity mask which creates a good selection for this rock face for example because i'll just start with this so i grab lumensia again which i already showed in other of my free tutorials and i start checking out those dark masks and see which fits best so I start with d3 which we see also selects part of the sky here so let's go to d4 and see what this does so this is already much better so it just selects a very small amount of the sky so here we have a little gray so this would be affected and if we move to d5 we see we have a very good transition or a very hard edge here and the selection especially of the area where we have this edge here is very good so i just start by selecting this mask but before i do so what i could do now you see this lumensia preview folder here and this is how lumensia creates the masks so you have these levels and what you could now do is you could further adjust this so i could bring down the bright tones so making the bright areas in the mask even brighter and i could also work on this mid-tone so selecting a bit more of this area so refining the mask and then also i could bring up the dark triangle again to further yeah um, to make this mask a little more defined here so this is quite neat with lumensia so you can basically adjust the mask preview here and now once i'm yeah, happy with what i've got i just go back to lumensia and click on select and now we'll just use this preview to create the mask and i'll control h hide the mask so the marching ants don't get into the way and now with a bright brush so with a white brush and like i start with 80 percent i just draw into the mask of the rock face and you see how i brighten the rocks but let's look at the mask so i don't brighten the sky so using this luminosity mask i can work very precisely on the rock face so i'll brighten this up and so what you'll notice especially in this part here as i blend i'm losing detail so this area gets very mushy or gray and that's a common problem you'll encounter when you lose uh, when you use luminosity masks for blending because if you brighten the dark tones of an image and leave the bright tones unaffected what you basically do you reduce the contrast in the image and this is precisely what happens here so let's look at the mask so for this area here i brighten all the dark tones and i leave the bright tones as they are so they get closer to each other and the result is kind of a gray image so i'm losing lots of detail so after this basic drawing through the luminosity mask i will deselect it Control d and now i'll clean it up so i remove the effect which i have on on this rock here because i don't need it and i'll also use like 20 percent to remove a bit of the effect here so basically what i do in exposure blending is always a combination of using luminosity masks and normal masking to avoid having those yeah, gray areas or those mushy areas and what i do for this area here this rock face i just go into the mask and use 100 percent white 
and paint it completely in. So basically I use the luminosity mask mainly for the edge to get the edge clean and I'll just fill the rest with 100% white and by this I also avoid this yeah this mushy look this gray look and for this lower part here I'll just use like 20% to get a smooth transi transition on the beach I also go in here a bit look at the mask again and also use 100% white to clean this up and then with like 10% I just refine it a bit so let's zoom out and see the before and after so this was quite easy to get in the light on the rocks so now it's time to tackle this C stack here in the middle which is still quite dark and here I'll use the C stack layer and yeah the process is quite similar or it's the same basically as for the rock face so I'll grab Lumenzia again look at the different dark masks and try to find one which creates a good selection and it's already the first pick here D4 I'll also go in here again to the levels and refine it a bit so just making sure I don't select anything of the sky and then I just select it and I can start painting in the C-Stack mask so I'll start with like 40% and bring it in and here what you'll notice now this doesn't look good so let's first finish the blend a bit so I'll clean it up and do the same like last time so I go into the mask and make sure that yeah I don't have those mushy areas in the end so basically getting the inside of the stack completely white so using it completely from the bright exposure now deselecting the mask using like 20 percent and yeah, cleaning oops that was the, for, uh, the wrong layer first I have to select the mask so uh, basically cleaning up the transition a bit down here in the water but nothing too fancy but still this doesn't look good so the brightness doesn't match so what I now do I use a curves layer and alt click between those so this creates basically a clipping between those layers and when I now darken what I only darken is the C stack layer so I darken it in a way that it looks a little yeah more similar to the other exposures in terms of brightness and yeah this might sound counterintuitive here because first I blend it in then I darken it so I end up with the same as before but not quite because the C-stack layer was exposed very bright so it contains much less noise and darkening it I get a much cleaner um, exposure here and what I still can do also Let's bring up the exposure warning so if I was darkening it too much I could just you double click and use blend if to, yeah, to basically preserve the very dark tones and I could also use a brush a black brush like 10% and even out the exposure a bit so basically moving in and removing the darkening in some areas and what I'll also do I go back to the C-Stack layer you see I have this water blotch here and let's deselect it you see this blotch wasn't there in the other in the base exposure so I just manually with a black brush bring back this area from the base exposure a bit and also here so trying to get it a little more yeah, close to each other and what you might also notice I'm not sure if it comes through in the video there's a slight shift in color so I just put a layer above the C stack layer or above all the layers remove the clipping here set it to color and now I just sample so I use a brush sample a color next to it 10% and 
draw over it. So basically getting those colors to match a little better. This is a common workflow if you have like also for lens flares or water blotches. If you want to get the colors to match, you can just use a color layer. And then you can use dodge and burn or whatever. So the techniques I showed in my other tutorial um, to get the exposure right. But yeah, basically that's it for the exposure blending for this image. So we started with this base exposure here and we used the rock face and the sea stack exposure and brought in the details to these areas. And from here, it's my normal post-processing, which you can see in my longer in-depth tutorials, which I sell on my homepage. So I hope you liked it. And yeah, if you have questions, just leave a comment down below. Mm -hmm.